Sometimes I just want to live inside that sound. I just want to have it always, always vibrating and making that beautiful harmony and melody. Sweet Mountain Dulcimer. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to Dulcimerica. It's the first episode of 2018, and I'm just kind of sitting here. I'm bundled up, as you can tell. I know it's winter. It's harsh all over the place. I mean, really, really crazy. But for Orlando, Florida, where they're predicting snow tomorrow, it's a little nippy for us. So I know a lot of you northerners sort of laugh at us, but it's cold. So I've got on my uh, Musician's Theory of Relativity sweater and my happy camper loungy pants that I got for Christmas. And yes, I'm wearing black socks with sandals because that's how I roll. So I figured, you know, a lot of you out there probably just recently joined the Mountain Dulcimer family, and you're thinking about, what can I do with this thing? So for the very first episode, let me show you some things that you can do. First of all, I hope you have a capo, and if you don't have a capo, go ahead and grab one. The capo is a way that enables the Mountain Dulcimer to quickly jump around and play in different keys and still have a drone going that matches everything. And I'll show you how that goes here in a little bit. But let me lay down some things here. The Mountain Dulcimer, when we're in DAD tuning, which I am right now, bass string D, middle string A, melody string D. When we're tuned this way, our home key is D. But we can also play in the keys of G and A. And then we can also play in the relative minor keys of each of those. So we can play in B minor, E minor, and A sharp. Uh, sorry, uh, B minor, E minor, and F sharp minor. Woo! So um, what we've got going on here is I'm going to show you a trick that allows you to sort of make up your own songs as you go along. That little tune that I just played right there, I was just kind of making it up. And I'll show you how you can do that right now. So inside of every key signature, in the key of D, for example, You've got a certain number of sharps or flats, and that tells you uh, to make alterations to each of the seven notes that we use when we're playing a diatonic scale, a seven note scale. So in the key of D, uh, those two sharps are F sharp and C sharp, and those are important things to think about. So the entire scale is D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, and C sharp. And then we play D again, at the end of the scale as the eighth note. Octo is Latin for eight. There's the octave above where we started in the root. So D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. So we've got a total of eight notes, seven different notes, and one that we repeat at the beginning and then at the end. And out of those notes, you can build a chord off of every single one of the notes, but the most popular chords are known as the 1-4-5 chords because they're built off the first, fourth, and fifth notes of the scale. So if we count that, one, we start with D. So D major, that chord. One, two, three, four. Four is G, so G major would be that chord. One, two, three, four, five. Five would be A, and so A major would be that chord. Now for this, uh, installation. I won't be talking about all of the music theory, just letting you know that uh, in every key there are three naturally occurring major chords, and these three chords are the most popular chords in the world. Why? There's a lot of science behind it, but also there's a lot of good feelings. They're happy chords, they're powerful chords, and they're chords that have made the world go around for a very long time. So in the case of D major, the one, four, five chords are D, G, and A. D, you can strum open for that, no problem. G, 310. A, 101. So let's go ahead and try that. D, G, A, 1, 4, 5. Four, one, four, five, G, D, A, D. There are other examples of those chords up and down the fretboard. You know, you've got G up here, you've got D here, you've got G here, you've got A here, you've got A here, all these different shapes. 
So it's good to know where all of those chords are located all over the fretboard, but all you need to know at this point are just those locations. Very, very simple, easy to play chords. So as the song moves along, what you want to do is just simply strum the dulcimer and change those chords. They can be in any order you want to. You don't have to go in that order one, four, and five. Just kind of move them back and forth again. The key thing to think about here, no pun intended, is you're going to start with D, and when you're finishing your song, you're going to end with D. In the middle, go whichever direction you want to. So we'll start off by just doing this. Sounds good, doesn't it? A lot of songs have this chord progression. That's what we're doing here. We're moving chords around. One chord is leading to the next, and that's called a chord progression. And songs are made up of very, very powerful and very interesting chord progressions, and the best ones have survived over time. And the 1-4-5 chord progression is one of the most popular of all time. Okay, the second half of this little secret equation is whenever you've got a chord playing, you've got a melody note or a melody line that's going to go over the top of that chord. In order for that melody to work as best as it possibly can with that chord, you want to choose the scale, that is that collection of seven notes, that scale that goes along with that chord. In the case of D major, it's the D major scale. In the case of G major, it's the G major scale. And in the case of A major, it's the A major scale. So let me show you where those scales live on the fretboard. D, you can do it a number of different ways, but one of the easiest to have all of those notes right under your fingertips is in a box form across the strings. We're going to play on the bass string, and then we're going to play on the middle string. So we'll go open, one, two, three on the bass string, and then open, one, two, three on the middle string. That's the D major scale. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Notice that you played the exact same frets on the bass string that you did on the middle string. This is really cool when you're working in this uh, tuning that you can do that all the way up the fretboard to get your continuation of a scale. So again, that's 0, 1, 2, 3 on the bass string and 0, 1, 2, 3 on the middle string for the D major scale. Now we only had to use three fingers for that and I like to use the thumb and these two fingers right here. Which camera am I looking at? And I get this finger here on fret one, this finger here on fret two, thumb on fret three, and they live there and they are responsible for all of the notes at those frets. If you can train your fingers to be consistent and use those fingers all the time on those frets, you're gonna find yourself able to really whisk through passages when you're playing, especially fiddle tunes that are going fast. But when we get up here to the G major scale, we're gonna to need to slide the thumb to get another note in. We'll start at the third fret on the bass string and then go three, four, five, and then we'll slide the thumb to six. Same thing on the middle string, three, four, five, and six. So we've got G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Key of G has one sharp, F sharp. We're using C natural, not C sharp, like the key of D. So when you're bouncing back and forth between the keys of D and G, and when you're using D and G chords, make sure that you use the appropriate note when you're soloing over those chords or playing in those keys. That's where a lot of mountain dolls per players run into problems, is they don't realize that that's not supposed to be a sharp. And it sounds bad if you're in that key. Nothing wrong with the note. It's not a bad note. It just wasn't written in that tune at that particular time. Um, okay. So we've got the G major scale, now we'll do the A major scale. A major has three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. We'll start from the fourth fret on the bass string and play four, five, six and a half, and slide the thumb to seven. Same thing on the middle string. Four, five, six and a half, and seven. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, there is your A major scale. So again, when you're playing the D chord, that means any note in the D major scale is going to be fair game.
some notes work better than others that you can linger on and that sounds really har harmonic. It's got a nice harmony going on. That one there has got a little bit of dissonance. It's not terrible, but only if you want that kind of effect emotionally should you hang out there. But if you're going for something that's got a, more of a clear harmony to it, But still, all of those notes are not bad notes at all. So then you uh, get a G major chord. Remember the G major scale is up here, so our L-shaped G major chord, 3-3-5, three, three, would help us to hold that chord down while moving through the scale and doing the same thing we did with D major down here. All of those notes in the G major scale work with the G major chord. Uh, and it's, uh, again, some work better than others. A major scale, same thing, we'll hold down a 4-4, four, 6.5 four, L-shaped A major chord with our scale right there within reach of our fingers and thumbs. So that's step one, is to take your chords, move them around, and then play the melody notes from the scales associated with those chords, and then you're starting to make some fun music. Now, now you've got melody going in chords. Chords basically are just individual notes that are providing intervals, the relationship between notes, and harmonies with each other. Pleasant harmonies that really, really make up a tune, usually made up of the root note and the third note of the scale, or the major third. Very, very sweet stuff. And it's very easy to get parallel harmonies on the mountain dulcimer by simply going back two frets on the melody string, or going up one fret on the middle string. And just move your fingers and uh, at the same time, and you've got some real nice harmonies going on there. But when you start building uh, harmonies of three or more notes. Basically, you've got chords. So I'm going to show you the chord shapes uh, for the other two keys. I've already showed you D, open, 310 for G, 101 for A. Those are the simplified chords. Going to G, we've got G. That is your one chord right there. C is your four chord, C major. That is your four chord. And D is your five chord. Some different ways to play those chords there. And then in the key of A, your one chord is A. D is your four chord, D. E is your five chord. That's eight, six and a half, five for E major. You could play those chords completely, or you can play them partially just to get the harmony, that major third harmony in there, and that helps sweeten up your music. So now as you're moving the chords around, noodle with the melody, with that scale in mind, and then drop in the appropriate harmonies and feel for them, either two frets down or one fret up. Mountain dulcimer is one of the only instruments in the world where you can sit and just noodle and it sounds really, really, really good. People will stop and think that you're playing some old tune and you're just messing around. I love this instrument for that, but it's kind of knowing those little tricks that'll help you navigate it and extract that music that's waiting in there for you. So let's get to the capo now. We've been in the open key of D. If we want to play uh, in the key of G, then we take the capo and put it at the third fret. 
And how we're determining the key is we're going by the bass string. Whatever note, the root note of the chord is, is going to be on the bass string. So for us, G is there. An open D would be an open key that we played in already. So we're going to put the capo at the third fret, secure it down there, and now our tuning is G, D, and G. We're in the key of G. The drones are going to match key of G, and now we can just play, uh, you know, melody style if we want. Remember our scale. You can also throw those harmonies in there. And remember our chord shapes. Now, since we are, um, normally we would play the G335 L-shaped chord, but since we've got the capo there, um, we don't have to do that. We can just put our, we can just do that. Put the thumb down there at the fifth fret. And then remember the other chord uh, coming up, C was down here like this, but we don't have to fret that note because the capo's got it, so we can just do this. This should start looking familiar to you. And then there is our D, our five chord. But you can also do it like this. Looks familiar like the 101 chord, right? We'll take a look at the chord shapes. This is the nut, basically, and also think of it as the capo. So we have our open chord strum, touch nothing, one chord. Come down for our 3104 chord, G major. Notice how our fingers look in relationship to that nut there. Let's do our 101 chord, five, A major, right next to the nut. So I'm taking a, a picture of what my fingers look like in relationship to the nut. And then when I put the capo on, that serves as the new nut. And all of those chord shapes remain true. Open for your one. This shape for your four, and that shape for your five chord. That's cool stuff. So you don't have to think about it too much. Same thing goes when we get into the key of A. Open for one, this shape for four, this shape for five. A, D, E, and our scale. And that's it. If you can kind of keep those things in mind, know that those chords, one, four, five chords, are gonna be the most powerful and the most used chords in folk music, blues music, gospel, country, pop, rap. It's a really, really powerful combination. So that one, four, five thing, if you just know those notes in those three different keys, you'll be able to play and jam with anybody. Again, for the key of D, the one, four, five chords are D, G, and A. For the key of G, the one, four, five chords are G, C, and D. For the key of A, the one, four, five chords are A, D, and E. Those are all major chords. We're using the scales associated with them. We move the capo, open for D, third fret for key of G, and fourth fret for key of A. Noodle and have fun with your mountain dulcimer. If you've just joined the Mountain Dulcimer family, welcome to the community. I think you're going to have a lovely, lovely time. And if you guys have any questions, drop me a line at bingfutch at yahoo.com. Well, this is going to be a fantastic year. I'm so excited to share some stuff with you. Got a lot of things coming down the pike, and I want to thank my patrons for making that possible. In fact, I'm going to give a shout out to one of my patrons, if I can figure out which camera to look at right here. It's Rose Browse. Rose, I love you so much. You and Blake are so awesome, and I thank you for all the love, encouragement, and support that you've given me over the years. And I hope you guys are not freezing your tushes up up there in Ohio, and I'm looking forward to seeing you when I come back through this summer. Thank you guys so much. If you guys are wondering about Patreon, it's a subscription service that you can just tune in to all my stuff, music, video, 
uh, tablet shirt, and uh, behind the scenes video. A lot of fun. Go to patreon.com slash bingfutch and check out the featured tag section on the left side there. There's a little thing that says open house. Click on that and download to your heart's content and let me know what you think. Rose, again, thank you very much. Well, my friends, that wraps it up for the first Dulce America of the year. I'll be back very soon with some video from Louisville, Kentucky, where I hear it's going to be in the single digits. I think I'm going to Target tonight to get me some long johns. Until next time, my friends, this is Bing Fudge saying, play on, baby. Play on. I think I'll go out in G. G. Let's make something up. Let's make up the cold northerner song. How about that?